Hi there. Welcome to the Hydrogeoanalyst video training series. My name is Braden McNeil and I'm the software trainer here at Waterloo Hydrogeologic. In this video I'll introduce you to the data transfer system, which is the module used to import data into your HGA projects. To access the data transfer system, simply click this button here in the, in the main toolbar, or you can access the data transfer system through the main modules menu. When you do access the DTS, the, then this data transfer system window will open up, and the first thing that you'll have to do is select the type of data that you'll be importing. As you can see, several different types of data can be imported through the DTS. The vast majority of the data that you'll work with should probably be imported through the general EDD or potentially the mobile EDD import uh, workflows. However, um, there are four other different types of data imports that are supported as well. Since the majority of your data is going to be imported through the general and EDD options, they're going to be the focus of this video, and I'm going to be focusing on the EDD option for the next video. Um, but there is also the option import chemical, diver, LAS, and image data. Chemical data is simply water quality data that's stored in an Excel spreadsheet that includes qualifying symbols like greater than or less than signs. If the qualifier symbol and the actual result value are stored in the same cell in your spreadsheet, then the chemical data import process will help you to separate those values which would then be stored in separate database fields inside of HGA. However, this ability to split up your qualifier symbols from the actual result values is now also possible through the general import process, and so there's not really any major need to use the chemical import process anymore. The Diver option allows you to import data from .mon files, a format generated from data logger monitoring software developed by Van Essen Instruments. If you do have these Diver brand data loggers, then this import option will be best for you since much of the internal data mapping will already be completed automatically. The LAS option facilitates the import of .las, or log ASCII standard files, a format which was introduced by the Canadian Well Logging Society, and finally, the image option is specifically for importing images, which can be associated with individual stations. If you'd like to use any of these last four options, I would definitely encourage you to visit our user manual for more information, since there is lots more additional detailed information about each of these four options contained within the user manual. So the remaining options are the general and the EDD import options. The EDD options let you import files that have been validated within our Quick Checker program, which is a, a small application that comes bundled with HydroGeoAnalyst. The mobile version of the EDD allows you to import data submitted specifically through the mobile EDD workflow. We'll discuss the entire EDD workflow in the next video, so for now we're just going to focus on the general import option. The general option should be used when you're importing general tabular data. It's particularly helpful if you're ever importing station data, as this import option allows you to perform coordinate transformations if your coordinate data isn't in the same coordinate system as your project coordinate system. Additionally, you can potentially convert data units during your import using the general option as well. So the general option is a simple six-step process that begins by selecting the data source which will be imported. The general import process allows you to import files in text or Excel spreadsheet formats, which would be facilitated using this first option here, but it also allows you to import data from Microsoft Access databases by building a connection string. In order to build a connection string with an existing database, select the second radial button here, and then click on this button next to the build a connection string field. That opens up a little window which allows you to basically map out your connection to the existing database. If you're importing a text or Excel or a comma separated value file, simply select the first radial button and click the button next to the specify import file name field. That will open up a file explorer which will allow you to browse to and then select the data file that you'd like to import. Once you've selected your data file or you've built the connection string, the area on, uh, below allows you to choose from the existing worksheets within your spreadsheet, as shown here. Or potentially, if you've built a connection string to an existing database, then this menu will list all of this, the tables within the database that you might want to import data from. For spreadsheets, you'll also have the option to specify which row in your spreadsheet contains header or column names, and which row you would like to start importing your data from. 
And before we proceed, we should also note that if your data does contain those chemical non-detect qualifiers like greater than or less than symbols, then you can split them up using this checkbox option down at the bottom. Simply activate the result field contains non-detect qualifiers checkbox, and then use the menu here to select from the available uh, worksheet columns. Uh, you'll want to select the column that contains your result in your qualifier data. The column that you select will then automatically be split up into two additional columns, one specifically for your qualifier symbol and the other for your actual result values. Once the data source has been identified, you can proceed to the next step, which is to map the data. This step includes a detailed table on the left, which shows the entire database structure with all of the available data categories and tables. You'll use one of the checkboxes here on the left-hand side to select the database table that you would like to import your data to. So in my example, we're going to be importing stations, and therefore we want to import those into the location table. When you do select one of the tables, then all of the fields included in that data table should be included in this uh, area on the right-hand side under the destination column. So for our location table, you can see that it includes a station name, X, Y, elevation, TOC, station type, and total depth fields. The aim of this step is to map the columns from the spreadsheet, or from your data source, to the correct tables and fields within the HGA database. We can use the drop-down menus under the source column to select from the available spreadsheet columns. Please note that if the column titles are, are the same, or if they're at least similar as the destination fields within the HGA project, then this data mapping may be done automatically. As you can see here, the name, the X, the Y, and the TOC columns have all been mapped automatically. Also note that you can leave some of these columns empty if there's no equivalent data in your source file. For example, in our data source file, we do not have a column for station type, and therefore I can just leave the station type field unmapped. However, any rows that are highlighted in green, for example, the station name field here, they have to be mapped 100% all the time. Green fields indicate that this is the primary field for the selected table, and you're not allowed to enter data into a table without entering a primary key for that record. So basically, if you ever see any green rows or columns here, that indicates that it's the primary key and that that field absolutely has to be mapped. And I should also mention that if the source units are different than the project units for the selected field, then H HGA will be able to convert the data to the project's units. So for each of your source fields that applies, make sure that you specify the source unit as well. And if those don't match your project units, then the conversion will happen automatically. Finally, if you find yourself importing the same kind of data very frequently and you find the data mapping to be somewhat tedious, it is possible to save all of these import settings to reuse later. If you ever save any import settings, then you'll be able to choose from the saved import settings using the menu here at the bottom. In order to apply the saved settings, you would simply select from the all of the different saved import settings that you've got available, and then click on the Apply button. Now, in my case, all of the data mapping is basically the same as what we've already specified, so we're not going to actually see any change here. The next step in the general import process is to select the coordinate system for the data source file. In fact, this particular step will only be shown when you're importing into the location table, since that's the table that includes your station coordinates, as we can see here. If the data source coordinate system is different than the project coordinate system, just specify what your source coordinates are using these menus at the top. HGA will then automatically convert the coordinates into your project coordinate system. The only time where this won't work is if your project coordinate system is in local coordinates. If that's the case, then it's assumed that all of the data that you import is also in that same local coordinate system. Now, if you do see this source data projection step, then you must be importing data to the station table, or, or in other words, adding new stations to the project. As such, you can also specify whether any of these new stations should be included to any pre-existing station group. However, please note that only static station groups will be available here, since dynamic station groups are updated automatically. And the last step in the data import pro process is to simply preview the data and import it. If you're able to successfully work through the previous steps, then there should be no errors or warnings displayed at this time. 
It's simply a chance to review the data before committing it to your project. If you're happy with everything, just click the import button and you'll be finished. The data should be imported after just a few moments. Before exiting the data transfer system, you'll also have the option of saving the current import settings to reuse in the future. As I mentioned earlier, if you find yourself frequently importing the same types of data, then you can save those import settings to reuse later on and you won't have to remap the data each and every time. In order to save the import settings, simply click this checkbox here, enter a name for the import settings, and when you click finish, it will automatically be saved and can be reused next time. So when I click finish now, I can see if I scroll to the bottom of my station list, all the new stations that I've imported appear right here. So that's it for this first data import video. In the next video, I'll introduce the electronic data deliverable workflow, which is ideal for importing large quantities of data into multiple data database tables all at once. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more HGA training videos.